Thank you. Hello. So this is what 2,000 people look like. Wow. Okay. Here I am, up to my eyes in the Liffey, at five in the morning. I like to swim in it. I guess I thought it had disappeared behind the key walls and the traffic. I thought it was in crisis, neglected, forgotten, unloved. I thought I could resolve this somehow by swimming in it. I thought if one person started to treat the river differently, then others might soon begin to see it in a new light. I would like to talk today about my ongoing love affair with the Liffey. I completely believe that if we re-engage with the river, it could utterly transform Dublin and its inner city. So, why are we here? I mean, here in the geographical sense. Why are we here in Dublin rather than 50 miles up the road? Of course, it's because of the Liffey. You can't see that answer at first, can you? It's not unlike the physical manifestation of the river. It's hard to see, especially from the Keys. But the Liffey gave birth to the city. It's the reason why Dublin exists. Think of all the motorways in Dublin. You've got the M50, the M1, the St. Lorgan Jewel Carriageway, but there's another motorway, one that you never hear anything about. We've allowed our planners to build a six-lane motorway that rips right through the very center of our city. The Liffey, Dublin's beating heart, its central artery has become obscured and impossible to access by six lanes of traffic. This motorway is not only responsible for dividing the city into north and south, it's also destroyed the areas around the Liffey. Think about it. Can a city thrive if a six-lane motorway rips right through its center along the river that gives the city its very meaning? I don't think so. The Liffey has become redundant. We have stripped it of its purpose. There's no ships on it anymore, no Guinness barges, just one canal boat imported from Amsterdam cuts a lonely figure as it ferries tourists up and down the river. Do you remember this image? It's taken from the back of an old Irish 10 pound note. 1756 map of Dublin by the acclaimed British cartographer John Rock. But look at it again, come to life. A deluge of boats and ships at Aston's Quay, right in the heart of the city centre. It's hard to imagine now, isn't it? But maybe not so hard. A few weeks back, the Tall Ships Festival almost brought the 1756 map of Dublin to life. I thought it was an incredible festival. It was a real celebration of Dublin and its river. Traffic was diverted, and the Keys became a pedestrianized linear park. Over 1.1 million people were magnetically drawn to the river over the course of the festival. Dublin felt real. It looked amazing, except for the fact that it rained a lot that weekend, but besides that, it was an incredibly beautiful time to be in Dublin. It made me realize once again exactly what we're missing in Dublin, a river with a purpose and keys that we can access. So, we all know that the Vikings were the first to settle in Dublin. They settled here simply because of the river. They could tie their boats up, shelter from the sea, travel upstream to raid a monastery or two whenever times got tight. I guess the modern-day equivalent of a monastery raid is a finance minister traveling to Frankfurt to hit up the European Central Bank for tens of billions of euro to bail out our crazed banking system. It was sadly coincidental, but I presented my first major piece of public art in Dublin in the exact week our economy finally imploded. Liffey Town took to the river in September 2010 as part of Absolute Fringe at exactly the same time that the IMF arrived in Dublin to dictate how we spend our money. I originally conceived the project as a reaction against the boom time practice of littering the country with hundreds of identical housing estates and pop-up apartment blocks. The project became prophetic. By the time I finally installed the red and green houses on the river, the practice that I was parodying had bankrupted the country and threatened to take the rest of the EU down with it. The houses bobbed unsteadily on the river, and glowed in the dark like a candlelit vigil for a society in freefall. Over 600,000 people viewed the installation from the Keys. Many more read about it in the international press, as it soon became an iconic symbol of our doomed love affair with building and buying houses. I located the project on the Liffey, as it remained curiously forgotten and neglected right through the boom. We like to build bridges across it, but very little else. I completely believe that a redeveloped river could completely change how we see Dublin. I've always thought that it should be a pristine public immunity, inspiring pride and affection. 
It could then kickstart a renaissance that resonates right through the heart of the inner city. I moved to Dublin in the year 2000. I originally grew up in County Limerick. I remember one day crossing the Hapney Bridge and looking west and literally stopping in my tracks. For the first time, I really saw the river. I was blown away by that incredible vista of ever-changing water and light and that classic Dublin skyline of green copper domes, tall red brick buildings, the grandeur of the forecourts, and the tangle of the smoke-spewing Guinness factory. It's a view, for me at least, that says Dublin like nothing else. There and then, I developed an uncontrollable urge to jump into the river and swim in it. So I did. I sought permission from the council, and I started swimming there with a friend who was a photographer. For the first swim, I followed the two-kilometer course of the official Liffey swim held every year in September. I like to swim at high tide when the water is at its cleanest, for obvious reasons. It still tastes like peat. It takes a little bit of getting used to. The last time I swam there was late September last year. I started at sunrise at the Hapney Bridge and swam as far as the Jeannie Johnston down the Docklands and contracted mild hypothermia, so I haven't been back there since. You feel fully immersed, not just in the river, but also in the city. I'm not from here, but while swimming in the Liffey, I feel an incredible connection with Dublin. The city never looks more beautiful than when you're swimming in it. You might remember this project. Uh, this time last year, I built an artificial desert island, as you do, and moored it on the Liffey for two weeks in September. I came up with the idea because of our changed circumstances. You know, Ireland was in a new place, and I thought we were newly isolated. I lived there for a week, pounded by gales. The weather wasn't like what it is at the moment, but the weather did not take away from the experience. It was serenely calming to sit there with nothing to do and no choices except to drink in the whole city from the most incredible vantage point. Herons perched from the island's edge, fed on passing fish all night long, and seals popped their heads up, checking on my progress. The first night sleeping there was absolutely terrifying. Whatever about surrendering my safety to a man-made island held aloft by ropes and a dozen orange juice barrels, I never expected to be fired at by a gang of ten tracksuited teenagers who set up a driving range on the Keys and pummeled my island with hundreds of golf balls. <laughs> it was, without a doubt, the most unusual week of my life. This year, I plan to make a new project, Word River. It was going to be happening right this second. I came up with the idea of washing hundreds of words into the pattern of the key walls, using a power hose, stencils, and the water of the Liffey. Using words taken from Joyce, another Liffey obsessive, I thought I would animate the key walls with a two-kilometer stripe of text extending across a city famous for its love of words. I planned on organizing artist-led boat tours of the installation, sharing my passion for the Liffey with one person at a time. Sadly, the project has been cancelled due to issues with planning permission. I've had to postpone it for now, and I'm going to hopefully make it happen in the very near future. It's heartbreaking. I've been working on the project for nine months. No man's land in Liffey Town. You know, with those projects, I was trying to say something about who we are, but this project celebrated something simpler. I thought it would kickstart the idea of the river as a unified space, a place where amazing things could happen, which brings me to the last part of this talk. So, what's my grand plan? What's the big idea I get to present today at a talk about a city of ideas? While sitting on my island last year, a very clear idea came to me. I imagined a ribbon of green extending the whole way along the Liffey Keys between Houston and Dublin Port. The vast majority of the motorway along the Keys has at least three traffic lanes, sometimes a parking lane as well. To make this park, the traffic lane closest to the river would need to be shut down and turned into a wider footpath, while still maintaining two traffic lanes. Bus lanes would be removed, on-street parking too. I'm sure the council would be delighted to hear that. Uh, you know, alternatives to accessing the keys would be encouraged, like park and ride, public transport, walking and cycling. The only area of the keys that are not wide enough to allow this to happen are a 450-meter stretch of the North Keys, west of the Four Courts, and a 20-meter section before and after Grattan Bridge, also known as Cable Street Bridge. You can remedy this by building new boardwalks in these areas. The Camshires and the Docklands already exist as a linear park. 
this is my favorite slide. Um, an international architectural competition could be launched to find a plan for the whole keys, one that ties together with this ribbon of green, the campshires, the boardwalks, and the rest of the keys. The park would need a signature design, a branding, something as simple as a narrow, continuous ribbon of green tiles that curves the whole way along the park. The new walkway could be separated from the traffic and the hum and roar of the cars with a new granite wall with inbuilt vertical planting. A trust would need to be set up to manage the park and maintain it and curate an ongoing series of projects and amenities, including playgrounds, markets, parades, kayaking, even a floating swimming pool that turns into an ice skating rink in the winter. The possibilities are endless. An ongoing marketing and PR campaign could spread the good news that the Liffey has become a world-class, must-see destination that people all over the world would like to access. It would become an incredible conduit for visitors to the city to visit some of our most famous tourist attractions. Ultimately, the park could grow offshoots, connecting the Liffey with the Phoenix Park, IMA, the Guinness Storehouse, Henry Street and Grafton Street. The rest of the Keys would experience a knock-on effect. New businesses would open, and people from all types of socio-economic backgrounds would want to live in the inner city. Of course, you're all thinking right now about the boardwalk, a brilliant idea that has become a bit of a no-go area due to antisocial behavior. Without a doubt, an eight-kilometer park through the city center would experience similar problems. There would be no point in building a beautiful park and then leaving, to it, leaving it to its own devices. A visible team of gardeners, guides, volunteers, even security would need to spread you know, the message that the area around the Liffey has changed. I know that's ambitious, but the inner city is ready for change. I live in it. It's a brilliant place to live in on many fronts, but it's ready for something new. I sincerely believe this ribbon of green would do that. It would provide that change. The park would not be dissimilar to the very, very successful Highline Park in New York except at street level with the added bonus of a river. The mayor of Paris has just announced that a 2.5-kilometer stretch of the Keys along the Seine is going to be completely shut down to traffic in early 2013, and a linear park is going to be built there. London wants to build a floating park on the Thames, opposite Tate Modern. Copenhagen, Berlin, and Antwerp have all installed floating swimming pools on their principal rivers. This is my favorite swimming pool in the world. It's called the Battleship. It's in Berlin. The New York borough of Brooklyn has been rolling out a series of river parks all along the East River. Cities all over the world are capitalizing on the potential of their rivers. The idea for the Highline Park came to two New York artists in 1999. They set up a community-based charity group that lobbied for seven years before the park was finally built. I hope to set up a similar group in Dublin that brings people together to reimagine the Liffey and its keys. I imagine it would cost at least 60 million euro to make this happen, probably a lot more. That's the equivalent of building seven kilometers of motorway. I know it would be a huge challenge to try to access that level of funding in a recession, but surely the ongoing return from tourist revenue alone should compensate for the initial investment. So, that's my vision. I know it's not just mine, I know lots of other people here today and all over Dublin are thinking along the same lines that they'd love to do something with the Liffey. Thank you very much.